Well, good afternoon and uh, thank you for coming along here to uh, this particular site this afternoon. As you've probably guessed given the location, I'm going to shortly say a few words about the clearance of the Crown-owned Red Zone land. Uh, but first I want to talk about something which I know has been long anticipated uh, and very much wanted by some sectors of the uh, community where they've had significant issues around insurance and settlement of their particular claims. Back in March I announced that we were going to set up a uh, residential advisory service for people who did uh, have difficulties with their insurers and what I can announce today is that that advisory service will be available from 8am tomorrow morning. It's for all property owners who are having uh, a range of difficulties with insurance and other repairs or rebuilding challenges in the case of their own particular households. We know that some people have struggled through complex issues and we believe that the Residential Advisory Service is the best way to navigate people through uh, the various issues that they've got so that they maintain a high degree of control in the outcome for their particular household. The service has been designed using real cases and real case studies and has been consulted on extensively with community groups, uh, with the insurers, with the wider legal fraternity and in particular uh, the Community Law Canterbury and it is designed so that it can deliver results for those who have the greatest difficulties. It will work by linking residents with the correct people for their particular issue, ensuring those needing help are given detailed specific advice and guidance by independent advisors. These advisors are professionals who in most cases will be working right now on issues uh, here in Greater Christchurch and across the areas of engineering, building, insurance, geotech silence, uh, real estate and any other specialist area that's required, they will be drawn. Their services as required will be called upon uh, to help unpick people's individual problems. I expect some cases will be relatively simple. I know that in my own case, uh, some time ago I'd had very little understanding of insurance terms, of uh, uh, building jargon, although uh, perhaps more familiar with that and most people will be uh, and then all of the other options that have to be considered around geotech advice and everything else. So I'm sure that um, when those things are more clearly explained to people and they have a place to go where they can ask those simple questions a lot of issues may be cleared up. But we all know there are others that will be more complex and that is an unfortunate byproduct of the many months of seismic activity that we have endured and it and is in those months that we've had the, uh, the administrative nightmare uh, and the uh, difficulties in assessing liability and the apportionment of costs. A lot of people have said that what we need was an advocacy service. But as I said when I announced our intention to set up the Residential Advisory Service, uh, with advocacy comes fiscal risk. In other words, financial risk for all parties, for those who are in some cases accepting uh, the result of an advocacy uh, and for others it would mean further delays as there are stalls put in place to prevent uh, outcomes. And it's worth noting that options already exist for dispute resolution through the Office of the Insurance Ombudsman, uh, through the uh, various legal means that people have to operate on at the moment and through a number of organisation specific resolution services. So we want an advisory system, an advisory service that empowers people to make decisions in their own best interest. I want to make a couple of comments about those who are involved, uh, particularly the insurers in EQC, uh, who are pivotal to making this work. Uh, they have seen the value of having this service, they want it to work, and I want to thank private insurers for the contribution they've made to funding the service alongside the contribution made by EQC to funding the service. Along with community groups, uh, the legal fraternity and insurers, uh, the design of this is such that I'm very confident uh, that all parties understand how uh, they do need to work properly and positively engaging in the process so that we do resolve people's issues. As I said at the beginning, is, uh, because this event has unfolded over a longer period of time, it's understandable that complex issues have arisen. 
especially around liability, but insurers need to be solution focused and have a heightened awareness of the physical and mental harm caused by delays in settlement. Some Canterbury residents have gone too long living in uncomfortable and difficult circumstances and in some cases unhealthy homes and it's time that that was put right as quickly as possible. So from 8am tomorrow the Residential Advisory Service will be available to assist homeowners to make uh, more rapid progress with the settlement of their claims. Uh, call centre staff will be immediately available tomorrow from that time and they will begin uh, setting up appointments with those independent advisors. There will also be meetings held from Monday in various locations across Canterbury to make access as easy as possible for residents. And more information can be found on the site www.advisory.org.nz. I want to make a couple of comments now about Southern Response. Um, Southern Response, as you know, is now government owned. It is effectively a run out insurer. Uh, AMI struck its difficulties and there had to be some resolution of those difficulties. The government's solution was effectively to take out the uh, claims from AMI, uh, take with them a number of financial instruments that would in part cover the costs of AMI or those claims and then to re-establish the company uh, by way of a trade sale uh, so that the brand would continue uh, and that some value could be recouped for those whose uh, claims required it. What I am able to report though is that data from April has shown that in its first year of operation, Southern Response has completed a third of the claims on its books. We didn't want to step into that AMI situation as I said before, but had it collapsed it would have had a severe impact on the lives of thousands of Canterbury families, leaving them with broken homes and uncertainty over getting them repaired or rebuilt. The team who've gone in to manage the company, led by Peter Rose, are doing, in my opinion, an excellent job in difficult circumstances. We're seeing strong progress in closing claims and rebuilding homes and Southern Response is ramping up its rate of settlement and exploring ways to deliver new houses faster. Southern Response, as a run-out insurer, covers around a third of all major residential earthquake claims in the, from the Canterbury earthquake sequence. It's handling claims for 6,786 earthquake damaged homes and 21,960 properties with earthquake damage to driveways, paths, fences, pools and other outbuildings, which combined with contents, temporary insurance and the loss of rents claims have totaled a liability in excess of $2.2 billion. Reinsurance contracts uh, from AMI's investment portfolio and the sale of AMI as a brand covered about $1.9 billion of that expense. This leaves the Crown with in excess of $300 million uh, to be spent to make up that gap. From our perspective it's important that those claims are settled as quickly and as satisfactorily as possible. I'm proud that the uh, government could in fact step in in a case like this but it does highlight some of the difficulties that we've had uh, along the way uh, and had to, had to take pretty drastic steps on. Finally I want to make some comments about the Crown owned residential property clearances. So we're here in uh, New Brighton Road uh, because behind us you can see uh, a clearance occurring. Clearances of Crown owned residential properties like these uh, have picked up a pace and there is now 2,074 completed. Still a long way to go but Sarah has a target to complete 3,000 demolitions by the end of September. 6,059 properties in the red zone have now been sold to the Crown, so the work is progressing much more quickly. As you know, over the past 18 months we've put a lot of effort into, into letting red zone residents make decisions about which Crown offer would best suit them. At the same time, uh, it's been necessary to protect uh, the Crown's claim for insurance that's assigned in the land 
uh, but we are now in a position where we can speed up the effort uh, to getting properties cleared. It's important that these areas are made safe, that they're kept tidy and maintained uh, before any future decision is made about them. In this area, 65 properties are in the process of being demolished, providing an area of almost 50,000 square metres that will be fenced and grasped, similar to the trial completed in Kaupoi over last summer. Planting will begin in early July and be completed by the end of the month. It is still soon, too soon, to talk about the future of the red zone land. There are still a lot of people who are moving out of their homes and there is still a great deal of work to be done to understand the hydrology of the area and I've asked that CERA officials uh, do engage uh, the science, with the science community to better understand the hydrology of the river nearby but also uh, the uh, water table issues in the areas that we're now standing on. I think uh, today marks an important point because it shows that there is a changing uh, nature in the work that's having to be done and it is another indication that despite all of the difficulties that we've had, uh, Christchurch is starting to move forward. And I think sometimes it's worth taking a minute to stop and think about the scale of this and the unprecedented work we've had to do collectively as a community to ensure that our community can move on. This has been a lot more difficult for some than others, but the main thing is that we keep moving forward to a better, brighter and safer future. With those comments, I'm happy to take any questions.